Today we'll look at how to create a cool glowing effect in Affinity Photo. You can start with an image like this and turn it into this. I'm here in Affinity Photo and I have this portrait image here. Now most of what I show you today will actually work in Affinity Designer and Publisher too. So you can use those programs if you like. Now the first thing I'm going to do to my image here is add an exposure adjustment. And I'm actually going to make it darker. So with my image selected, I'll click the adjustments and then I'll select exposure. So if we go to the right, it becomes brighter. I'm actually going to go to the left and I'll put it to something around minus 1.6. That seems pretty good there. Now I'll close it. Let's now create our glowing shape. I'll use a triangle for this. So with my shapes here, I'll right click on it. I'll select the triangle tool and let's drag a triangle. I don't want any fill color, so let's cancel that. I'll select the stroke color and I'm just gonna make it white. This can all be changed later so there's flexibility there. I'll make the stroke a little bit thinner. I'll click this up here and drag the stroke down. Let's rotate it around. I think that will be pretty good there. Now I'm gonna add a mask so we can hide the parts that are behind her. So with my triangle selected, I'll click mask layer. I'll go and select a paintbrush. And if I look at my brushes, I want something relatively solid and round. Let's select black. I'll zoom in here and I'll erase the triangle. So there we have our initial triangle. Now let's create the initial glowing effect. So I'm gonna create a new pixel layer. I'll click this button down here. I'll rename it glow one, just so it's clear what it does. Now I'm gonna set the blend mode to color dodge. So with this layer selected, I'm gonna click the blend mode drop down and I'll select color dodge. So let's choose my brush. I like this round light brush here. And I have my color set to this magenta. Now I'll start painting. So I'll just click and drag. Just making a little brush strokes, not letting too much build up. So this is our initial glowing effect. Now we can add a little bit of a blur to soften the effect. I'm going to use the live filters here, but if you're an affinity designer or publisher, you can click layer effects and then choose the Gaussian blur down here. Let me close this. I'll add the live filter. So I'll click this. I'll select Gaussian blur and let's blur it a little. Just helps soften it up a little bit. So I'll close this. Now let's add a curves adjustment just to get the lights and darks a little bit more balanced. So I'll click adjustment. I'll select curves. If you've never used curves before, you can check out my video on that subject. I'll leave a link down in the description below. But the basic thing you're gonna do for 99% of situations is just to create a simple S curve. So I'll just boost up the light a little bit up here. And I'll just drag down the darks a little bit down there and I'll close it. So this is before, after, before, after. Now let's add a second glow. And we'll do it the same way as we did the first glow. I'll add a new pixel layer. I'll select my brush. I'll make it a little bigger than before. I'll make sure the blend mode is set to color dodge. And I'll just paint over it again. Now I'm gonna add an HSL adjustment to this layer. That stands for hue, saturation, lightness. I can do that with adjustments, HSL. And I'm just gonna change the color a little bit. So I'll shift it a little this way, a little more towards the blue. It just helps add a little variety to our color. Now I think this top effect is clearly too strong. So I'll go with the opacity. And I'll just dial it down some, maybe right there. Now we can start adding some highlights to our portrait. I'll add a new pixel layer. I'll call it highlights. Once again, let's set the blend mode to color dodge. And what we wanna do is on our portrait, just add little accents of color. So if I zoom in, maybe a little bit of color there, a little bit of color there, maybe some there. Just kind of a matter of style. Now I think all these accents are a little too strong. So I'm gonna use a smudge brush to smooth them out. For me, that option is down here. I click the arrows to expand it. I'll click smudge brush and select that tool. And I can start dragging these effects out a little. Maybe we can dial down the opacity a little bit. I think that helps. So you can see the effect of the highlights before, after, before, after. Now let's modify our exposure adjustment. There would be light going on her face here. So going back to the exposure adjustment, I'll expand my portrait. And here we have our exposure adjustment. I'm gonna add a mask to it. Now adjustment layers themselves act as masks, but I like to just manually add another mask. So I'll click mask layer. I'll drag it down here over the exposure. I just find them easier to see and manage that way. So I'll select my brush again. I'll select some type of dark gray. And now I can start removing the darkening effect on her face. So we've darkened up all the other areas, but we've kind of exposed this area a little bit more. Maybe on the rest of her too. Let's do a few more color adjustments just to make it seem like this light is covering everything. 
I'm going to select the rectangle tool here. I'll drag it over my whole image. And let's give it a magenta color. Kind of similar to our light. I'll set the blend mode to soft light. And then I'll dial it down a lot. Maybe 5%, 6%. I'll keep it at 10% there. So you can see it just helps give a little more unified color. Another thing we can do is add some more color to the center. So I'll add another pixel layer. I'll select my soft brush. And if you want, you can just add a little more color here. So I'll click. I can reduce the opacity. And that just accented it a little more. Now, if you see that some of your light looks a little clumpy or uneven, you can smudge it out or erase it. I think Glow 1 maybe has a little bit too much thickness here. I'll just select my eraser brush tool. Maybe I'll just blot some of it out a little bit. And you can just touch it up as you see fit. And here we have our final result. Before, after. Before, after. If there's any topics you'd like to see covered in the video, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.